Greetings and welcome once again to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. And in this video, I'm going to talk once again about the idiocy and incredibly absurd concept called an infinite decimal expansion. In order to do this, we have to go back to someone called Leonard Euler. Let's begin. So what did Euler say in Article 82 of his Elements of Algebra? Actually, they're called the Elements of Algebra, but in Article 82, it's Algebra rather than Algebra. He says, to express this idea according to the sense of it above mentioned, we make use of the sign, and you see that upside down 8, which is the most garbage concept ever invented or ever thought of, which consequently indicates a number infinitely great. Well, it indicates a number infinitely great which doesn't exist. That's like saying to somebody that there is a largest natural number and that crank of all cranks, of all mainstream mathematical cranks, who is the father of all idiots in mainstream mathematics, his name is George Cantor, he is the one who actually said that that number is called Aleph Zero. Okay, and get this. He says that there's that there are other numbers even greater than Aleph zero. And he's got this whole theory of transfinites and a lot of other Jewish mythology, which is probably worth not even two cents if you study it in its entirety. So he, sa he says that this fraction now and then he says, and we may therefore say that this fraction, well, first of all, one over that funny object there is not a fraction of any kind, is in reality nothing. Oh, so I think what he meant to say there is in reality zero, but it's still wrong because a fraction cannot be reduced to nothing until the denominator has been increased to infinity. Okay, so this is the kind of garbage that has poisoned mathematics. It still persists to this very day. Consider this formula here. This formula here produces for any integer value of n a term of the sequence that you see in front of you, 0 0.3, 0 0.33, etc., whose limit is given by taking the limit of this formula. So we, we say, okay, analytically we say that if this n becomes infinitely large, this becomes closer and closer to zero so that this approaches the limit of one-third, okay? It's never going to actually be equal to one third because for this to be equal to one third, it means that an n exists here such that this expression is zero. That's impossible. And of course, the incorrigible idiots of mainstream mathematics academia keep on telling you that this here is equal to the limit of this, which is equal to third, which is outright laughable because 0 0.333 dot dot dot, a garbage concept if there ever was one is equal to the sum of these terms taken forever and ever, amen. Not even the gods who live forever would be able to complete this so-called bogus infinite sum, okay? And yes, it is an infinite sum. It cannot be the limit because the limit is very well defined. What is it? It's one-third, okay? So then they like to say, and this is equal to the sum, okay, which is not equal to the limit, which is equal to a third. Okay, and there are several reasons. For starters, the left-hand side is an infinite sum. Okay, it's not a limit. 0 0.333 dot 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 is equal to this. And if any of you know what this Greek sigma means, it stands for sum. Okay, and that little uh, piece of crap lying on its side there is called infinity. And the right-hand side of an individual term, this right-hand side, is yeah, the right-hand side is uh, an individual term of the sequence given above of this sequence here, okay? So, no infinite sum is possible. Infinity is a supertask. And you know what a supertask means? It means it can't be done, okay? So, in their dysfunctional brains, they were influenced by the crank Leonard Euler, who claimed in art Article 82 of his Elements of Algebra that there exists an N such that 1 over n is equal to infinity, is equal to 0. There is no such n, okay? And you can't say n is equal to infinity there will make this true. That's garbage. So, 
what they think is that infinity is possible and that there is an I which satisfies this sum here. In other words, the I actually reaches uh, its goal, which is to be infinitely large and indeed is equal to infinity. I mean, you know, you'd probably believe mythology before, if you have, if you have a normal working brain, you'll believe mythology before you believe in this bullshit. No, we mean that 0 0.333 is the limit, and they carry on with a lot of other uh, hand-waving garbage, hastily adding um, whatever they want, as if the drivel they spew out carries any authoritative weight whatsoever, because they're all morons. Now, 0 0.333 dot 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 is what they call an infinite decimal expansion, and of course there is no such thing, which supposedly states that a third has a measure or a representation in base 10. Now, this is in direct contradiction of the most important number theorem, which states, and it follows, a number P over Q has a measure in base B if and only if B contains all the prime factors of Q. Till this day, the imbeciles refuse to be corrected. And there are many reasons. But essentially, all their Cantorian BS and their incorrect formulation of calculus falls apart if they abandon this key principle of, doc of the doctrinal beliefs. They persist in their academic ignorance and stupidity, and perhaps someday the apes will come to their senses, although I don't see it happening in my time. Trying to fix stupid people is usually a futile task. My hope is that students will watch this video and call out their idiotic and incompetent mathematics teachers and lecturers. And that, my friend, is what I wanted to remind you of again. Very important. There is no such thing as an infinite decimal expansion. It's... Uh, a misguided, ill-formed concept in the minds of stupid people. Unfortunately, there are a lot of them in mainstream mathematics academia. My name is John Gabriel, and this is New Calculus Channel. Till next time, goodbye.